Wait, what are we calling the podcast now? Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Freethinkers podcast. It's also a video. I'm Red. And I'm Kenneth. And today we're going to talk about the conference that pro-lifers have been trying so hard to stop the past few days. And it's the A... It's the APCRSHR, the 7th Asia-Pacific Conference on Reproductive and Sexual Health and Rights. So catchy. So yeah, we should challenge them to say that without making a mistake. I don't think any of the actual... If they can say it seven times in a row, then we will consider. No, but seriously, what is this conference about and that you have much? that you are you're a speaker there aren't, yeah. aren't you and what is the conference about and how much are they paying the filipino free thinkers to appear in it and outside it okay so so what is it and why do you think they're trying to challenge its um, constitution or its its legality, legality yeah. yeah there there's a currently a temporary restraining order request that has been filed mm-hmm. um, at the pasay city regional trial court by our good friends um the attorney Imbongs, uh, the mother-son duo, um, who often who often represent the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, they're um, part of the legal council, yeah, yes, and pro-life Philippines in this case. Uh, they are trying to stop the conference because they claim that it is uh, that it is violating our law against abortion, and it makes a mockery of it the- makes a mockery of the law because we're talking mm-hmm. about abortion during the conference. So, does the conference actually promote abortion? See, when you use language like you say promotes abortion, um, when you go in there, there's not a baby firing abortion cannon, and then everybody is all about let's kill the babies. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest concerns in that conference is how to reduce the number of abortions. Every delegate that I have met there from whatever country can rattle off the estimates of the number of abortions they have per year and it's really depressing. Like it's uh, they like I say, so Pakistan is like a hundred thousand. Um, I am probably mistaken here but like okay. I, I keep hearing figures like a hundred thousand, a million a year um, and, and it's happening. Whether it's legal or not in these countries, it's happening and women are dying because of it. So the two mm. priorities that they have, there are many priorities in this conference, of course, but yeah. um, when you talk about abortion specifically, their main priority is how do they prevent more of them? Because there's so many. How do you prevent it? And the second is, for the women who do need to get them, how do you keep those women from unnecessarily suffering and dying? Because they're going to get them whether you ban it or not. Do they promote that? the the legalization of abortion here in the Philippines? No. No. There, there's um, currently in the conference right now, there are no talks about hmm. um, our agenda here in the Philippines. Because you have to remember that this conference, uh, all of the talks are concerning many of the countries. Um, so it's, it's India, it's Pakistan, it's Malaysia, it's Indonesia. Uh, so the Philippines is not the sole focus of this conference. Mm. It rotates uh, throughout every couple of years, and it just so happens that this year the Philippines is hosting it. Um, yeah, that being said, like there are no talks in that conference, and I have the program here, which is saying like how do we legalize abortion in the Philippines? So the conference organizers or the, even the participants there do respect the laws that the Philippines has. In fact, they're very careful yeah. about it because the United Nations FPA is one of the sponsors and there are a lot of other international groups that are the sponsors, the evil imperialist money as the pro-lifers keep talking about. Um, they're very careful not to impinge on the sovereignty of um, of certain countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the point where I, and of course, I don't speak for the conference. We were very kindly invited. Um, but just to be clear, we don't speak for the conference or its organizers. But this is to the point where I feel that they're being overly polite. Um, when you talk about, for example, countries under uh, that have a large Islamic law component or a large swaths of it are under Sharia law, mm-hmm. or in some countries where um, Islamic law is enshrined in their constitution even, um, like Pakistan and to a smaller extent Malaysia with their official religion being Islam. Uh, 
they, although they're supposed to be secular, but it's iffy. They, the, the general attitude of the, at least the organizers of the conference, many of the people are saying like, okay, respect that. Mm. Um, this is the religion thing, and yes, it, there's a religious component to their government, so we need to respect it. Let's not go heads up against it. But let's not even confront it, which I think is, of course, I'm not, I'm not from there. Probably their situation is much, is, is very different from ours. But, uh, but I do not agree with the, um, that, that we should be timid about confronting these issues uh, in, in various countries, especially when it comes to sexual and reproductive rights. I mean, okay, yeah. So we have clarified so far that the conference does not promote the legalization of abortion yeah, in the Philippines. Philippines. Yes. But for the sake of discussion, they are for the talking about abortion though, they for the sake are. of argument, yeah. for the sake of argument or just discussion, even if the conference was trying to promote the legalization of abortion in the Philippines. Do you think it, it would be worth worthy of a TRO from the Pasay court? No, no, not You're at just all. Discussing like, even, even if you were discussing uh, the, what the, the precedent that the Imbongs are trying to set uh, is that if you talk about an illegal activity, then you should be stopped or there should be some legal penalty for you. This is the equivalent of, uh, and I don't believe I'm being far-fetched, I was talking to some of the other lawyers here, yeah. it's the equivalent of, we talk about the legalization of marijuana, mm -hmm. and then you have a TRO to stop that. Imagine all of the debates in all of, you know, in schools, in universities. Yeah, with debates. Like, you can't have these topics. The abortion debate. The, you can't have a, the, the classic the pro Catholic, side. The, on, on the, on the yeah. debate circuit, right? Like, yeah. Especially for Catholic schools. Like, oh, bro, abortion, boon or bane, whatever. It's, okay. You can't have that. You can't have that. You can't have anything yeah. to do with crimin. Or, okay, let's, let's be very pragmatic here. Right. Do you think that the imbongs are that... Stupid? Stupid or undemocratic to do this? Or do you think it's somehow a strategy of theirs to bring more attention to this issue and to show everyone that they're not going to budge even the slightest bit on the, the issue of abortion? It's very hard to say like their interior psychology, but it would seem like if, if I were just assuming that they weren't that smart, then I would say that it's a strategy of theirs to bring attention to the issue. Um, mm. And they might be tone deaf enough to think that the country would actually accept such a blatant curtailment of freedom of expression. Hmm. Uh, they might be doing this thing where they're preaching to their core or preaching to their choir because hmm. they do have a hardcore group, which I understand is getting smaller and smaller ever since the RH bill passage uh, of their pro-life contingent. And they might just want to be able to say like, okay, well, let's stay relevant for these people. So I'm going to file this TRO. Look, we're defending, we're yeah. defending the faithful. Could it be kind of sticking to the same message? Because I, I do think that they're trying to use the tactic of say something often enough and eventually people will believe you. So they're saying that RH equals abortion, not just contraception or contraception is abortion. Yeah, no, they, they will continually. And they, the, the, the yeah. two things they're harping on, and you can see it in their, in their signs, is, uh, yeah, Satan is pro-choice. Um, all the RH bill is is all about abortion, mm -hmm. and RH that law. the RH it, law yeah. is about abortion, and that uh, and that and that uh, there's imperialist money, and then the, these foreign influences are coming in, and it's a giant imperialist conspiracy to kill us all, mm. because because to people like Eric Manalang. An overpopulated country is a good thing. Okay, yeah. I'm going to try to sympathize with the with the pro-lifers, with the anti-RH people for a bit. So I'm a pro-lifer, right? And I believe that it's actually human beings that that are being killed whenever an abortion happens. Okay, okay? it's not just a clump of cells. Okay. It's an actual human being. Okay. And abortion just simply kills them. Okay. So because that is what a pro-lifer believes, right? Yeah. They, and they, they, they spread those pictures of the little baby holding mm -hmm. the hand. And, and, the we, okay, yeah. and we believe that these things actually have souls. Okay. And that they're actually children of God. Okay. And as much a human as you and me. Okay. So abortion kills them and I'm going to do everything that I can to stop it. In fact... Our Pope, 
said that when he was a bishop, he said such strong words against abortion. Yeah, and he has reiterated those words. He has reiterated them, but even as early as when he was a bishop in Argent in an Argentine, in Argentina, 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 yeah, yeah. Yes. he said that even when when you you are um, threatened with entrapment or with imprisonment, like you should fight against abortion. And now that he's a pope, he said that. It what it's what keeps peace from happening all over the world. Abortion. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I am going my going to do my best to fight against abortion. Okay. These these conferences they are organized by people who have passed abortion, uh, legalized abortion in their countries, and if we let them happen here in the Philippines, it's. Uh, it it can be argued that we will be closer to that being the case yes. even in this country yeah. so i am going to do what i can to stop it yeah now where am i mistaken there i mean um, as a as a pro lifer where do you think i made a mistake in terms of arguing against abortion like uh okay i'm going to be the the free thinker again right uh -huh. okay those those clump the, the clump of cells that's not a human being as far as I'm concerned it's not it's not a person it doesn't deserve to have the, the same kind of rights that yeah. uh, that that persons have yeah right that, and it's going to be a long discussion for me to prove that but that's where I'm coming from yeah. and that's where the main difference lies I think mm. but not a lot of people, even within the free thinkers group, even within the RH group, agrees with me even on these points. Mm. That is why a lot of people in the free thinkers or in the RH advocacy movement in general are against abortion. Yeah, and that's that's no RH yeah. but against abortion. I, I'm going to be straight with you. Cards on the table. I I wish that more people within the free thinkers group or within the RH group were pro abortion pro legalization of abortion but they're not they're they're just they're just not so as much as some of the people there i don't know if they're part of the minority maybe they're in the minority if they're we're being on the know, conference like uh, in the philippine side oh, like okay the, for the filipinos at least you know they're not even surely in the majority i, I can't speak for them no. so we we can't speak for them but even as much as we'd want them to be pro-abortion, they're just not yet. Like, sure, some, some of us there, I am, maybe Ken is, I you am. are. Mm -hmm. So we are pro-abortion, the two of us. But that's just the two of us. There are other members in our organization, in the RH movement, and they're against abortion, which is why it's not an issue that we, we promote as an organization. The Freethinkers has no position on abortion. The RH movement in the Philippines has no position on abortion. The closest that we'll get to a position on abortion is that we want it to happen less, which is why we want the RH law to be implemented immediately, uh, immediately yeah. because it, it will lessen the number of abortions. It has happened all over the world. Here's a link to a study that, that shows that when you implement uh, RH properly in a country, it will bring down the numbers of abortion. My worry is that in conferences like these, especially for, say, high-ranking officials, um, the timidity with which they approach the issue of even the minute that they see any kind of opposition, um, such as an anti-RH movement, out, uh, an anti-RH rally, by a few dozen people outside the PICC, um, I would like to call out already, like Secretary Ona of the Department of, he of, the Department of Health, and Noino, who's supposed to give a... A, a talk there. Will he still even be going? Now there's some doubt. Um, just because he doesn't want to be seen to be butting heads with the church. But for an issue as critical as this, uh, as, as where you can make a real difference in preventing more abortions, then I think that, you know, whether you're pro or anti-abortion, you, you have to come up and you need to step up. Um, you particularly, and this isn't everybody, um, I've noticed one, one of the most heartening things while we were standing outside there today. Because yesterday I gave a talk, and then today I was outside the gates um, in the counter protest um, in support of the conference. Many of the same people who are in my talk, you know, and these are academics, these are people middle aged and older, as they were coming down off their cars and they saw us, and they were asking, hey, would you like us to stand with you? 
And I felt very touched by that. People from all over the world. And they saw that and they were like, hey, would you like us to stand with you there? So there is real bravery out there. I don't know if the higher ranking officials, even in our own country, are willing to do something as simple as stand up for women in the face of these blatantly anti-women pro supposed pro-lifers let's call them anti-choicers from now they're anti-choicers yeah. they're anti-choicers because they they don't even want there to be talk of choice yeah and, and i that's, just felt like that's... and of course we were standing there we were not the only filipinos of course the ladies from the Khan yeah. are always there they're right? always they've been there far before us but you know there's us there and yet I was just so struck because here are guests from another country and now apparently there's like legislation being tossed around that they could be deported for even demonstrating wow. in this country, right? Like um, for, for the last incident. Well, there, willing there to, is a law. Yeah, yeah but, they're a law. but they're willing to stand up because they know that it is to alleviate the suffering of women that's happening every day. And they know that they're advocates um, and they're so vulnerable and they're willing to stand with us and they don't even live here. And yet we have high-ranking government officials who are not willing to stand up for women just because they seem a little scared of what the church might say. And they have no excuse. Have the, no excuse. The, the people from the anti-choice movement, they can at least argue that, like I said earlier, they actually believe that, that abortions are so dangerous that they, they should do whatever they can, like stop the foot in the door from even happening and block abortion from even becoming a remote possibility they have that excuse but our government officials our high-ranking leaders as you called them do not have that excuse they know what's in the RH law they know that it has nothing to do with legalizing abortion all it will do is number one lessen the, the number of abortions and two give that uh, post-abortion care in, in in some cases right? well, and of course and this is um, also to do with like even the one of the organizing principles around yeah. free thinkers, which is just you, you need to be able to talk about these things. You cannot go out and say that here's a conference with people from all over the world who are discussing very important issues and controversial ones, and what the anti-choicers want to do is to shut it down. They want people to stop all of these discussions, uh, and and that would be really. Strange. And it's and it's very telling to me. When, when someone wants to stop a discussion on a controversial and very much debated issue, yeah. they're afraid of just that. They're afraid of having these discussions, of having to debate because they have no, nothing on their side. Yeah. They can't defend their position. They can't give enough arguments or evidence yeah. to support their we'll, case. We'll, we'll say so that. they'll just say, shut up. We don't want to even talk to you because we can't. Right. We will say it out now. Um, Red is pro-abortion. I'm pro-abortion. Freethinkers has no official stance on it, but we can go out and say it, and we're willing to discuss all of the merits of our case. And um, yeah, yeah. So so let's. Um, I think we even us as an organization has some discussion to do within our ranks on yeah. on where we stand when it comes to abortion. Maybe we can clarify why people have those different uh, those different opinions or that, yeah although that means that like one of the things that i'm very grateful for apart from being like privileged to be invited to this thing is it's um is that you see the situation of many other places in other countries and i don't want to say it's better here in the philippines um, because everybody's situation is very different but there are certain things which we can do here that's a lot easier to do than like say pakistan when i was talking to some of the people there yeah and let's take advantage of that. The fact that like, we can talk about these things openly and that we can go out and demonstrate openly is such a powerful thing. And I don't think that we should waste this opportunity when there are people in the rest of the world who are fighting for the same things we are fighting for but have so many more restrictions. And, there are, and more so because there are people like the anti-choicers who want to bring us to the situation in, in, there. in places like and, Pakistan. Right. And here, the worst thing that will happen is somebody will punch you in Congress. So, again, like, like we always say, the best way to protect your rights is to exercise them. So let's talk about abortion. Here we are, talking about abortion freely. <laughs> but uh, sure. thank you so much. Yeah, very mature. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. And uh, talk to you next time about abortion or whatever. Right? Okay. Okay.